Michael Madigan's arraignment is set for this Wednesday. It comes after the U.S. attorney last week charged the former Illinois House Speaker with 22 counts, alleging multiple instances of leveraging his powerful position to enrich himself and allies. It's a dramatic capstone to a 50-year-plus career, described as both legendary and corrupt, depending on who you talk to. Chicago Tribune investigative reporter Ray Long began covering the State House at the beginning of Madigan's historic reign as Speaker of the House and has unique insight into how Madigan operated. His new book is called The House That Madigan Built, The Record Run of Illinois' Velvet Hammer. And joining us now is Ray Long. Ray, great to see you again. We saw you Friday for Week in Review. Congratulations uh, on the book. And I want to start with uh, the 1981 legislative remap uh, which sure. kind of launched Madigan's rise to power. He took on then House Speaker George Ryan and won. Explain what happened. Well, uh, they were both battling. George Ryan was the House Speaker then, the Republican House Speaker. Mike Madigan was the Democratic minority leader. And they were trying to get a map through the House that would uh, be something that they could pass to the Senate and get to the governor. And George Ryan was struggling to get a congressional map through. He got that through by a vote or two, and then came the, the legislative map. And it all came down to one vote, uh, and Ryan had drawn lines so that downstate Democrats would have safe seats, and he was hoping to lure some people over, and a guy named Gary Hannig, who, as you remember, rose up into Madigan's leadership later on, uh, stood up as a young one- or two-year uh, lawmaker and said, you know, this is a really good map, and, and we're sitting in the press box, and again, he's going to jump for George Ryan's map, and then he says, but I'm going to stick with who my friends are here, and so he danced with the one who brung him. He stayed with Democrats. Ryan lost that map, and as a result, they went into a uh, commission. They tied in the commission. They drew by lots, and uh, the Democrats won, and by luck of the draw, Mike Madigan was drawing the Democratic map that made him speaker and launched that 36-year run. So that battle portended uh, what would uh, come. And then 1988, you're right about the White Sox miracle. Remind us how uh, Mike Madigan worked behind the scenes with Governor Thompson to keep the Sox and owner Jerry Reinsdorf from moving to Florida. Right. It was an amazing night. Uh, there was the clock was ticking down. It, the Senate uh, passed uh, the bill with 20 minutes left before midnight. They had to pass it before midnight uh, or it, the bill would be dead. Thompson roared across the uh, rotunda. They opened the big wooden doors for him. He jumped in, in and started uh, wrangling with Republican lawmakers uh, desk by desk. Madigan scurried to get his list. He went into a darkened uh, speaker's office where one of his daughters was sleeping and found the list and ran out. Steve Brown, his uh, longtime aide, recently was quoted saying that was the only time I saw Madigan run and he ran out onto the floor and he was going desk by desk. Pretty soon they had uh, uh, all the votes they needed except for maybe two or three and the clock was running down and then uh, they dismantled the clock so you couldn't tell what time it was actually wow. and a uh, radio radio broadcaster charlie mcbaron said you know i don't know what time they're using right now but it's got to be close to midnight well they eventually got the the final vote, uh, James Stang uh, did it while Thompson was standing on top of him at, at, at his desk there. And uh, he pushed the button and, and uh, Jim McPike was in the chair and he slammed the gavel and said, it's 11.59, boom, the bill passes. And the place right. was up for grabs. On a general level, Ray, all observers, myself included, uh, wondered about Madigan, especially in later years, if he had a political ideology or if it was just all about the means. It was all about building power and and remaining Speaker of the House, and, and there really was no ideology beyond that. Is that square with your observation of him? It looks like that more and more. As I dug in more and more, there were uh, even uh, some interviews, one interview in particular done uh, out of Southern Illinois that I saw where he had said, um, I don't use a specific adjective that uh, to describe me as a Democrat, like conservative Democrat or liberal Democrat. I'm a Democrat. And as a result, he was able to have more flexibility. And as he as he moved forward, he 
went from a guy who was very conservative coming out of the Irish Catholic enclave on the southwest side, and then he moved to a guy who would uh, support higher taxes for schools and cities and also gay marriage and abolishing the death penalty and expanding abortion rights. And very much different from a guy who started out as a very conservative guy from kind the of, Kind of went side. where his party went, and of course we have the political right. fall capped off by the federal charges he's facing. Here's what uh, U.S. Attorney John Lausch had to say last week. The indictment accuses Madigan of leading for nearly a decade a criminal enterprise whose purpose was to enhance Madigan's political power and financial well-being while also generating income for his political allies and associates. Unfortunately, this type of criminal conduct drastically undermines the public's confidence in our government. Ray, you know, with patronage and pay to play, you have instances in your book where he kind of goes up to that line of legality but doesn't cross it. The conventional wisdom was he always knew where that line was. Are you surprised at what you saw in this indictment? Well, it certainly is a different Madigan than what was described uh, to us uh, by all of his acolytes and all of his cheerleaders over the year who had said, oh, no, he'll never cross the line. He knows where it is. Well, of course, he drew the lines, too, so he should have known where they were. But he apparently knew when he thought he wouldn't get caught, and this time he did get caught. All right. Well, a lot of uh, interesting anecdotes that give you insight into the man himself and into his historic reign uh, in your book. And our thanks to Ray Long. Thank you, Paris. And again, that book is called The House That Madigan Built, The Record Run of Illinois' Velvet Hammer. You can read an excerpt on our website.